درود به مردم شریف ایران من شهریار افشار هستم میزبان شما در پالیتکس 365 امروز آقای زک کاردر به برنامه‌مون دعوت کردیم آقای کارتر نسبتی با رئیس جمهور سابق آمریکا نداره اما یک مدیر آفیسی هستش به اسم مؤسسه غیر انتفاعی به اسم Free and Equal Elections Foundation و هدف این مؤسسه پرورش کاندیدای بیشتری در انتخابات رئیس جمهوری آمریکا همونطور که میدونین تو این کشور تمام کسایی که رای میدن محدودن به یا دموکرات یا ریپابلیکن یا گهگاهی شاید یه گرین پارتی یا یه حزب دیگه هم اسم خودشون رو بتونن برسونن در ایالات مختلف اما برای تمام مدتی که شاید همه شما آمریکا بودین و خاطره دارین این یه کشوری که فقط بین دو تا کاندید رئیس جمهوری رو انتخاب میکنن خلاصه این مؤسسه آقای کارتر درش مدیر هستش هدفش اینه که کاندیدای مختلف دیگر هم به نظر تمام افرادی که رای میدن برسونن بقیه برنامه به انگلیسی هستش اما لازم رو ببخشید زک کارتر ویلکم تو پالیتکس 365 thanks for bearing with me as I'm explaining some things in Farsi uh, really interested in what you're doing and what the organization is about as someone that talks about politics of course we're Iran centric and Iran and American and Middle Eastern centric but I also like uh, featuring uh, people running for office maybe have Iranian descent uh, in, um, in this country. And of course, I want to make sure our audience understands the American political system, uh, the elect- election process, and how, as we said before the program started, how it's really been limited to two candidates. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars spent just on two candidates. It's a little frustrating. Uh, I feel in the past few decades that people have voted in this country, they just feel like they don't have a lack of, uh, they, they, it's a lack of options. Uh, even though good candidates are in the periphery, they never make it the, make the cut, and uh, they're just limited. So I'm really interested about what your group is doing to help broaden the the field of uh, qualified um, candidates. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me here. Um, and uh, yeah, we've never had an, an Iranian American uh, presidential candidate on our stage, uh, but this this organization got its start. Um, with a, a Lebanese American candidate on on a debate stage, Christina Tobin, the founder of Free Equal, was um, uh, Ralph Nader's um, ballot access coordinator, and they were at an event together, um, not a debate, just a, another event. And he said something to her along the lines of, "I could get interviewed by everybody here when it would only be a fraction of the attention that I would get if I was in the presidential debates." And that's when a, a light bulb went off in Christina's head and, well, let's just have our own. And uh, yeah, that was 2008, uh, 2012, I joined the team. Um, we uh, um, hired Larry King to to moderate one of our debates and that was a game changer. Um, we hope to top that this year. But yeah, we provide a, a neutral platform uh, for candidates outside of the two party system. Every other major democracy on the planet has more than two choices for president um and even even countries where you know the the two parties aren't so dominant um but they're paid attention to um they influence the major parties when they're there's subjects that, that the two parties aren't talking about right, right. england it, is a, a great example of that it, it, and we'll get to the 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 third party candidates sometimes in this country they call them spoilers because they just take away enough candidates from, uh, uh, let's say, Democrats to, let's say, uh, cause uh, 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 Vice President uh, uh, Gore to lose. But, but uh, that's not, the, that's not um, my main qu- question. My question is, how did we come to this stage? Uh, was it always a two-party country? Was, was there any point where a third-party candidate had any chance of getting... Uh, on the ballot yeah well the republican party was the third party until until lincoln won Mm. back then um and they you know historically um when a third party wins it's because they're championing one cause um that uh that the two major parties aren't uh paying any attention to um and uh yeah so historically that's and not just here 
uh, but uh, other countries as well. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, and um, the League of Women Voters used to run our debates here in this country, and they did a, a much better job than the Commission on Presidential Debates that was established and pushed them out. Um, the debates have steadily gone downhill since then, mm -hmm. uh, from you know format questions and and even the the amount of time that the moderators speak. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a long journey to get here, and and uh, it's felt like tilting at windmills as far as uh, trying to change things. But but it 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 feels like this is our year to really right. shake things up. Yeah, because I think for the most part, despite what you see on TV, you know passionate MAGA supporters and passionate Democratic supporters. Uh, they're all, there's all, it seems like this country has always been split in three, really. The, the undecided, the moderates in the middle, and then hardcore Democrats and hardcore Republicans. So you're trying right. to, in essence, if I can understand correctly, trying to elevate the, the un, you know, a candidate or a group of candidates for the, third, for the middle of the road moderates that are not hardcore, because you'll never talk to Democrats or the Republicans into giving up uh, the hardcore ones into giving up their candidates. So it's really the middle that you're trying to uh, speak to, right? Oh, completely. Yeah, forty-three percent of registered voters now are registered independent. Um, yeah, um, mm. and uh, as to the, um, you know, how the the two parties are are getting more and more, uh, um, you know, kind of chained to their their radical base, right? Right. Um, that they, they're less willing to talk with each other, and if we had a strong third party, um, that 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 would have to change. They would have to right. talk with each other. Right. Um, and right. so, one thing about the third party candidates that kind of I think maybe creates a bit of a, a question mark for moderates or middle of the road people. I think it's just my theory. I could be totally wrong. Is that the other two candidates, Republican Democrat, they came up in the ranks of their party for decades. So they were a senator, a congressman, a, a governor. You know, they got street cred. They got they got uh, ground uh, grassroots. They got funding. Whereas the third party candidates often is maybe a billionaire businessman like Ross Perot or you know uh, somebody else or Steyer. More recently, is it Tom Steyer? If I'm uh, if I remember yeah. right. Um, so you know, billionaires suddenly are the only ones that could possibly uh, uh, self fund a third party run. Ordinary citizens have no chance, at least in this system. Am I wrong in that or is there is it possible? I I I think that uh yeah I I'm definitely optimistic that anything is possible. Right. Um that uh not not everything stays the same forever. Right. right? And, so uh, it, I mean it, but but this this when you look on the stage and you see like a former governor or current governor senator, congressman, and then the third party candidate, it seems like just intuitively people may not embrace that third party candidate, even though they're super qualified and they feel like they don't have enough government experience, even though a lot of people don't have a lot of trust in government to begin with. <laughs> they don't have a lot of right. faith in bureaucracies and political insiders. So, But still, they, they lean towards people that they feel are qualified, that, you know, Democrat, Republican, governors, senators, congressmen, but the third party candidate doesn't have enough uh, political experience, it seems like. They got yeah, good well, passion, good knowledge, good yeah. insight, but not this, the resume. Well, um, that's, yeah, I, I think Jesse Ventura is a, a great example there of, of someone who didn't have the experience um, and was polling pretty low when, when he was allowed to debate um, in the governor's race of Minnesota, and it was the debates that that changed, um, yeah, the outcome right. completely. Right. That was so, definitely a game changer. A state a former wrestler and movie star from uh, Predator uh, turned politician, just like his co-star uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, it, it, you know, Arnold. You know, also even though he acted Republican, he very much did a lot of Democratic things in a Democratic state. Uh, so yeah. sometimes I've seen, just like uh, Senator Manchin, who who recently is uh, going away, um, they they may caucus with a certain party, Democrat or Republican, but they're very much 
in the center and they make a lot of uh, 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 scale decisions. You know, they push their weight left or right and they have a lot of pull. Do you feel maybe that's the way to start people that caucus with Democrats or Republicans, but then they're really moderates in disguise? Well, I, I think that there there are some of those already in Congress, right? You have some independents, um, Angus King in Maine, and right. and um, yeah, so and and he's pretty moderate down the middle. Um, and there's some people that uh, you know have that D and the R next to their name, but they are pretty moderate. Uh, Joe Manchin comes right. to mind. Senator Manchin. Um, As, I'm sorry to see him go, even though he gave the Democrats a, a tough time sometimes. Uh, he was a Democratic senator in a Republican state. Uh, and right. now it looks like a Republican senator has won the primary in that uh, uh, seat to replace him because um, he won't be running. But, uh, you know, how can people support what you're doing? How can they plug into what you're doing? Um, I mean, do you, I mean, I know I think your founder is in California, but your group is all over the country. Uh, how can people support what you're doing, really? Yeah, um, they can go to freeandequal.org, our website. Uh, you can sign up there for notifications. Uh, we have a debate coming up on uh, July 11th at uh, Caesars Forum in Las Vegas. Oh. And our last debate was broadcast by C-SPAN. Um, I think we had a, a dozen broadcasters total. Um, mm. but, uh, yeah, all that information will be sent in in, in an email. And uh, yeah, and then yeah, tune in and watch and... Mm. and uh, and our, our debates are, are different. Our questions are hard. Um, you're gonna, you might learn something watching right. our debates. Where whereas the Democrat and Republican debates, it's yeah, scripted sound bites and shouting at each other. It's just entertainment. Uh, it's just entertainment. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I don't, I really don't know what people gain from debates. I mean, to be honest, uh, you know, I don't think people really expect the president to make decisions on the fly, standing at a podium, you know, big nuclear decisions and global decisions. He has a, a, a hundreds and if not thousands of consult, you know, advisors and there's a process. But somehow in this country, we've gotten romantic and sentimental about debates. Ever since the Nixon and, and Kennedy debates, we've gotten like used to those debates as if that's the way you size up a president. When And, and uh, if you go back and watch those old debates, though, um, yeah, they they you you did get to learn more about them and what they stood for, and and you you learned something. Right, um, they were more uh, I want to say courteous and professional and diplomatic, uh, well, and sometimes fun. You know, yeah, uh, like yeah. Uh, even Reagan saying he uh, he's not going to make age a issue in this campaign against Mondale, who was younger. Uh, yeah, and right, the joke right. was he's the older one, right? Uh, and here yeah. we are again in 2024, and age is an issue. Uh, people keep bringing up, and yet you want your president to be wise and uh, and learned and and seasoned and someone that is world has world knowledge, uh, but you don't want them to be uh, so old that that they feel like it's really most Americans would retire by that age, you know. Yeah, and should be age. hanging out at the beach with my right. father. Right, and and, and oh, Barack Obama was an anomaly in this equation. I mean, he kind of came out of nowhere a junior senator, you know, for a couple of years of experience, you know, but his charisma and his, uh, uh, I think, uh, orate, you know, speaking style really touched the nerve at the right time in America. And uh, he kind of uh, accelerated. Uh, but we really don't have that young energy. So I really want to know, uh, especially in the debate coming up, tell us a little bit more about who's going to be participating in those debates. I mean, what are the third party candidates that we should look for? Yes. Um, so at our last debate, we had a, our own poll to determine who the candidates were going to be. Uh, we invited the top seven. We ended up with two Greens, two Libertarians and a Socialist. Mm -hmm. um, but this next one, because a lot of these parties have now nominated their candidates uh, or will have by the time we get there, um, the Constitution, the Libertarian, the Green um, will likely have Dr. Cornell West. Um, my fingers are crossed. We'll also have RFK Jr., um, and Peter Sonsky from, um, I, I don't have it in front of me. I can't remember the name of his party. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, and we were hoping no labels would nominate someone like a Joe Manchin. Uh, right. But they, they decided not to and instead sat it out. 
Um, but uh, yeah, we're we're um, we will have a good a good diverse field. Right. So Joe Manchin is not running for anything right now. No, no. I think a lot of people were kind of hoping, thought that he is not going to run for Senate again because he has his eye on the presidency. But it looks like he's not uh, doing uh, any of that stuff. He's who knows what it's going to come back with. But RFK uh, Jr., you know, uh, the, the if I'm not mistaken, the son of Robert uh, Kennedy, um, uh, you know, he, he most Americans, most uh, people around the world know that name. Uh, and yet the Ke Kennedy family has kind of disowned him a little bit. Part He's of the of, family. He has part a of the family, family. Not, not the whole family. <laughs> Uh, he has some views that are not mainstream, I guess, what people would say. Uh, but what is he running as? He's still running as a Democrat? He's running as an independent. Independent. So yeah. obviously a Democratic family, Democratic lineage, but he's running as an independent. And uh, the question is, could he or should he, uh, can he participate in uh, in this third party debate? He would certainly be a star, more name recognition than anybody else. Right on the on the stage. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, but he hasn't chosen to really participate yet. Well, you know, I think what you're doing is amazing. Uh, the work that the Free and Equal uh, Foundation uh, Elections Foundation is really important. Um, I really want people to um, let me say that right. Free and Equal Elections, yeah, Foundation. Uh, there is a website. Uh, what is it? Free and Equal. Uh, is it dot org? Correct. Right. Freeandequal.org. So go to that website, learn about third party candidates. Uh, it's really important, at least to broaden your horizons. Um, for the most part, even though, again, uh, popular politics sometimes calls third party candidates, uh, you know, spoilers because they just take away enough from a Democratic candidate uh, because of the electoral system that pushes a Republican forward. Uh, but in so many ways, uh, this country is a tale of three parties, you know, Democrat, Republican, and whatever you call it, moderates or people in the middle that are not beholden to any one uh, party. Uh, and and that uh, doctrine, they're, they want to have a freedom of choice and uh, they're unregistered, you know, they're undeclared, they're not Democrat, Republican. Uh, and I think that, that might be a growing segment of America because people are fed up with, you know, a lot of radical a uh, strong opinion from Democrats and Republicans, right? Exactly. They, and, they want uh, a choice. Yeah. And um, we hope to uh, build as we go here. We're in early planning stages for another debate in September um, that'll likely be in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you posted as we cool. go. Sounds good. Zach Carter from uh, the Free and Equal Elections Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for doing what you're doing and elevating, you know, third party candidates to the political conversation. And uh, hopefully uh, voters and Americans will benefit from uh, the, those broader horizons. Thank you so much. Mom, <laughs>